my heart, God, the word that you spoke into me, my God, you would move me aside and you would speak through me, Lord. Let me simply be your mouthpiece tonight, God. I pray you'd have your way. Amen and amen. And we see, you know, Moses was described in the, many of the commentaries, he was a godly man, right? He was a prayer warrior. He sought the face of God, and we know that he became a leader. You know, he led the people, right? There's so much that we could talk about when it comes to Moses. But I want to focus in on this prayer, this moment. And we know that Moses was a chosen vessel. God chose Moses, and Moses said yes to be a chosen vessel. When we look at what a, a vessel means... It means a, a canal in which the body fluid is contained, conveyed, or circulated. In other words, a tool that can be used to convey something, right? A tool that God could use for his kingdom, a tool of revival. And we see in Exodus 2.10, she presented him to Pharaoh's daughter who adopted him as her son. She named him Moses saying, I pulled him out of the water. Moses was found in the water, right? That was the first sign that he was chosen by God. Then we see in Exodus 3, God get Moses' attention by the burning bush, right? He said, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. And we see that Moses was curious, like many of us have been in this midst of revival, right? There's been a fire taking place in Victory Arts, San Diego, right? And it's brought some curiosity. But God chose him. God's hand was upon him. And we see that from the very beginning of Moses' life, God chose him and set him aside for a specific purpose, for a specific mission. His mission be being to bring his people out of Egypt into the promised land. And how many know that sounds a lot like our mission, right? Because we're a lighthouse. We're a lighthouse to the inner cities of the world and also to San Diego. And our mission is to bring people out of out of a life of drug addiction, right, violence, you know, abuse, right, broken families to the feet of Jesus, to see people rescued out of their Egypt. And we know that fire brings curiosity, right? We talked about that. And Victory Outreach is on fire. But I want you to know that however you came into this church, whether you've been here for years or whether you just showed up because of the curiosity of what's taking place here, I want you to know that you are a chosen vessel of God. You are a chosen vessel of God. But if we want to be effective in the kingdom of God, if we want to see our children, you know, our families, our friends, our coworkers brought to the feet of Jesus, encounter Christ, we have to be vessels that God could use. When we look at Moses, I want you to know that everything that took place in his ministry, right, all the guidance he got, all the miracles he's seen first took place in that intimate place with God. His prayers and his posture of prayer manifested into his reality. His prayer revealed what he valued. And Moses not only said yes to being a chosen vessel of God, but we see that he prayed the specific prayer. And that's what I want to focus on here this morning. Because you could tell someone's motives and desires and heart by what they pray for. Because what you pray for, you become. And what you value is revealed in your prayers. And it's what you manifest into your reality. And we could learn from his prayer here this morning. So Moses prayed that he'd become a vessel of honor. We see in the scripture, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. Teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Pray that it would be his will and not mine. His will and not ours. We see that by praying this prayer, he was asking God for his will upon his life. And I know that for me, this is my decade of decisions. Right? I'm 20 years old. <laughs> so by the end of the decade, I'll be 30 years old. And these are the 10 years where I'm going to make the most important decisions of my life. Right? Right? And so I'm asking God for God's will upon my life, that whatever he would desire to do, he would do it. But I don't know what your plans are here this morning for your marriage, you know, your, your vision for 2020, for your family, for your ministry. But I want you to know that that's a prayer that we got to ask God, asking God for his will. God, show me your ways. Whatever your goals are, do you have guidance from God? 
Have you got a promise from God for your, that ministry you lead, for that ministry you're part of? And I admire Moses' posture because his main thing was that God would have his way. He said, God, teach me your ways. We also see that through this prayer, he said, God, watch my steps. Moses knew that every step he made mattered. That every move that he made had an effect. Right? Moses understood the power in his steps. And he prayed that God would have his way in every step that he took. And we know that it's not about walking the right way. And we heard that tonight, but it's about rocking in the right spirit. His prayer revealed that he wanted to walk aligned and in step with what God wanted. Not just walking what seems to be right, but walking in his perfect will. And I just want to share this scripture. It says Psalms 18, 20 through 24. It says, God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before him. When I got my act together, he gave me a fresh start. Now I'm alert to God's ways. I don't take God for granted. Every day I review the way he works and I try not to miss a trick. I feel put together and now I'm watching my step. And that's something that Pastor Rick said over the pulpit there in Mexico. He said, third wave, watch closely and carefully. And I want you to know that if you're boxing in what third wave means, that we're all part of the third wave. Whether you're in the back of the church, whether you're on the sides of the church, however age you are, you are part of the third wave because you are imparting into the generation that is going to see our promise fulfilled. But he said, God, watch my steps. And I remember first becoming a gang girl worker. I was like 15 years old. <laughs> and it's kind of cute. But I remember my leader sitting me down and she began to explain to me how I was an example to my generation. By saying yes to being a gang girl worker, I became an example. And I, there, there was qualifications, right? You don't just become a leader or become, you know, get that responsibility. But there was standard. And I remember being so honored. I was like so honored. And I was like, God, I would pray every morning. I'd pray, God, let me be an example to my generation. Let, let me be an example to my family, to those around me. And sometimes we start off like that, right? We start off with that prayer, God, make me a vessel of honor. God, let me honor my pastors. Let me honor my leaders. But sometimes down the line, your prayer switches up a bit. And so my question to you is, are you still praying to be a vessel of honor? That we would honor our, not only our ministry, we'd honor God, we'd honor our families, we'd honor our pastors, our leaders, we'd honor our children. That we would be vessels of honor for his glory. That however God uses you in the church, in your church, that you would ask God, God, make me a vessel of honor. God, teach me your ways. That we'd walk in the spirit and led by the spirit. Moses not only asked God to be a vessel of honor, but he asked God that he would be a vessel of power. We heard about the power of God tonight. The scripture says, then Moses said, now show me your glory. And when we look at what glory means, it means glorious moral attributes, the infinite perfections of God. Glorious moral attributes, the infinite perfections of God. And it's 2 Corinthians 3.18. It's a, this is the message version. It says, whenever though they turn their face to God as Moses did, God removes the veil and there they are, face to face. They suddenly recognize that God is a living personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. And we are transfigured much like the Messiah. Our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and as we become like him. And this scripture reminds me of our church in this revival. Face to face with God as Moses was, is what it reads. Moses sought God and he wanted to see him face to face. He was a man who went out of his way to seek God. The extra mile to seek God. And in this revival, some of us have been calling off work, right? Some of us called off work for the morning because we're going to rest. 
you know, making our prayer closets, fasting, you know, getting rid of those Takis and, you know, the candies. I know for me, the Takis and the wings were the hardest for me. But, but doing, making these extra decisions, right? Going the extra mile to grab a hold of God because there's a burning des desire in our hearts to be face to face with God. But the thing about Moses is that every time he's seen God's guidance fulfilled, it pushed him to seek God more. And maybe you're here this morning and you've seen, you know, a vision from God. Or you've gotten your word from God at the last prayer meeting. Or maybe you're here and you already got your word from God. I want you to know that God has more. That there is more that God has for you tonight. That's the crazy thing is you can never get too much of God. But God will always pour into you if you want it. God wants to reveal more to us. He wants to re reveal more to us, church. And when we commit to chasing God with the desire to see his glory, we become vessels of power. We also see that they recognize God is personally present. Old constricting legislation is obsolete. Obsolete meaning no longer useful. And that's much like us. No longer living by religious duty. Getting rid of our Pharisee spirit, right? Like we did a few weeks ago but living in personal revival in our lives. Living out of personal revival. Not living by a religious spirit. Getting rid of the constricting systems, right? And the constricting religious spirit, but now we're coming with personal revival. Something taking place at home, right? Something taking place in our prayer closet. That when we come here, we could, we could serve God corporately. Personal revival, being face to face with God experiencing it within our lives that we would be vessels of power. And in closing, if they could make their way up, I would just want to read Isaiah 42, 20. And it's also in the message version. And it reads, God intended out of the goodness of his heart to be lavish in his revelation. And I believe that God wants us to experience his miracle working power. I believe we're on the tipping point, right? We're on the tipping point of God pouring out his power upon us. But the scripture says, out of the goodness of his heart, because he loves us, he wants us to be lavish in his revelation. And like Moses, we have a mission, right? We have a mission. We have a mission to see the hurt. We prayed for the souls, we prayed for the hurting. We prayed for our family that's unsaved, the backsliders. We have a mission, a real mission that is right before us. But I believe that as we become vessels of honor and vessels of God's power, that he wants to pour out his revelation, that we would see a revolution. Because I believe we've seen it in our history. In our history, we, we've seen that it's always come from revelation. We look at our founders. He saw God. He sought the face of God for our ministry and got promises from God. He got revelation from God. And look at us now, a revolution that took place. And so I want you to know that this third wave, we need revelation from God. But we need people to impart. So we're all involved. We're all in this third wave. We're all part of this revival. Because I want you to know that when we have a desire to be a vessel for God, a vessel of honor and of power, that God will release his revelation. It says in his word, out of the goodness of his heart, he wants to lavish us with revelation. He wants to speak his word into us. But what kind of vessels are we this morning? And my question to you is that here Moses prayed that prayer. God, teach me your ways. God, teach me your ways, God. Let me be careful the way that I walk, God. Let me be attentive to your will for my life, God. So he said, show me your glory. Show me your glory, your infinite power, right? Your, your infinite perfections. Show me your glory that I could be a vessel of power to our generation. Because church, I want you to know that there's so many hurting people. There's so many, you know that, I know that. But our generation's dying. 
Our generation is dying to drug addiction, to abusive relationship. I want you to know prostitution is still a real thing. Our generation's dying, but we need vessels of honor, vessels of power that God could pour his revelation into, that we would see a revolution in this next wave of revival. And so as you stand and as they prepare the song, our prayers have power and we know that, we know that. But I want you to examine your prayers here this morning. Take a look at the type of prayer you're praying because it manifests into our destiny. What we pray is what we become. And so my prayer is that it wouldn't just be the third way, but that this entire room would pray that God, let me be a vessel of honor. Because when you walk in honor, you walk differently. When you walk and say, I want to honor my pastors. I want to honor God. I want to honor this ministry. I want to honor my leaders. I want to honor my family. You move differently. There is something different that flows from your life. And also when you say, God, I want to walk in your power. I want to see your glory. And as we prepare this song, I want you to examine your heart. I want you to examine your prayer. And I want you just for a few moments to say that prayer. God, teach me your ways. God, show me your glory, God. That we would see our generations. 